let's, let's read together. What does it say? He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. Okay, continue quickly. Go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. Verse 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh my, okay, let me read this from my Bible. Looks like no konogai. Whose feet, whose feet they had with fetters, he was laid in iron. Verse 19. We read that to verse 21. So be go with me. Until the time that his word came, that the word of the Lord tried him. Mm -hmm, continue. The king sent and loosed him. Even the ruler of the people let him go free. Continue very quickly. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance. Continue. To bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. That is what a, the blessing of father can do for somebody. Somebody say amen. amen. When we come to speak a blessing over your life, Joseph is one good example of a man who was blessed by his father Sometimes even before the father pronounced the blessing, he had shown intent that I intend to bless this young man above his brothers. And if you are here this morning by the grace of God, I may not preach so much, but I've come as a father to speak a father's blessing over you as we share the Holy Communion. And I want you to see what can happen to you when a father's blessing is on your life. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. The New King James Version says he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold as a slave. But at the end of verse 21, he says, this man who entered Egypt as a slave became an advisor to the, the, the king's servants so that he was teaching his, the, the servants of the king wisdom. Look at your neighbor and help him preach. I tell him, neighbor, how you start does not determine how you will end. Oh, tell him, look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, you'll be glad you came to this service. Somebody say amen. Tell them you'll be glad you came to this service. Because when God shall be through with your life, I want to declare, some of you shall not be where you started. Somebody say amen. Because where you started is not where you shall end. Because you are going somewhere in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jacob had many sons. In fact, he had 12. But he picked out on this young man called Joseph and he singled him out among his brothers. If you are here tonight, I want you to know the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. If you are here tonight, you are not just among the called, you are among the chosen. Because as I come with the anointing of a father to speak over your life, I want to single you out from among your brothers. From among your... Hey, let me stay here. Those guys are not saying nothing. Let me preach in this corner here. I want to single you out from among your brothers, from among your sisters. For a special blessing that shall make you, even if you came in this country as a servant, as a slave, you shall end up as an advisor and a teacher. Somebody talk to me here. You know, sometimes I, I feel I'm too prepared for God's people. Are you ready for me? Or am I too ready for you? You're, also, you're just much as ready. Are you ready for this? Somebody say amen. amen. He sent a man before them. He sent a man before them. It is not God. Who, it's not his brothers who sold him. Mm. If you read the script, the brothers sold him. The Ishmaelites bought him. They took him to Egypt. But the Bible says they, they thought they were doing that, but they did not realize it was God who was maneuvering all these things at the same time. You are not here by accident. You are not in this service by accident. We are not meeting by accident. Now that you are here, I want you to know, am I in the, I'm in the right group here? Now that you are here, God did not send you here to kill you, to destroy you, or to finish you, or to finish your family. And that you are in this service, I want to declare, your family shall not go down. In fact, by the anointing upon my life, I want to declare the direction of, if you have been going a wrong direction, there is a turn around coming upon your life, coming upon your ministry, coming upon your business, coming upon your children by the anointing of the Most High God. Somebody say amen. Push your neighbor, tell him, neighbor, I know my life will never, ever be the same again. 
If the person you are talking to is jealous of you, move around. Look for a person who can celebrate your progress. Who will be happy when your life changes. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't need to put up with someone who is not celebrating you. You are allowed to party hope in this church. And we'll look for a place where there is a man or a woman celebrating your progress. Celebrating you are going forward. Celebrating the change in your life. Who does not just want to put up with you as a slave, slave and a servant, but who shall be happy when you become a teacher and an advisor of the princes of Egypt. Woo! I'm enjoying myself already. Somebody say amen. amen. Why did all this happen? Because Jacob had blessed Joseph in a special way amen. above all his children. Are you understand me, friends? In the book of Genesis chapter 49, hey, please, up there, don't. Is it up there or down? Why is that doing these scriptures? Is it up or down? Chapter, look, look for me, chapter 49, verse 22. Look, look, get this. Chapter 49, verse 22. Chapter 49, verse 22. And understand this. Chapter 49, verse 22. Have you got it, Pastor? My pastor, have you got 49? Where Jacob is blessing his children. Genesis 49, verse 22. This is the blessing. He's bl look at the blessing. And we shall go, say, read several verses. Look at the blessing he's giving to, J to Joseph at the end of the day. What does he tell him? Joseph, yeah, I thought we were reading together. Joseph is a fruitful branch. Even a fruitful branch by, or by a well. Whose branches run over the wall. This is what is blessing Joseph to be. But look at how he, he summarizes his life. Go back, go continue verse 23. Very, very quickly. Verse 23. The archers. Do you see how he summarizes? The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. That was a paraphrase of Joseph's life. People pierced him. They sent arrows. They shot at him. They cut him. They threw their spears at him. They hated him. They called him names. You understand me, friends? This is the father declaring. And then he continues to say, hey, listen to what he says. But his bow. See, the reason he, he did not die in the pit. They are not getting me. Let me preach this side. The reason he did not die in the pit. The reason he did not die as a slave. The reason he did not die in the prison. Are you understand me, friends? When the archers had shot at him, arrested him, thrown him in a pit, pulled him out, sold him into slavery, serving as a slave, all that as it was happening, and thrown into prison, the reason he did not die, are you, are you understand me now? It's because the, the but his bow abode in what? In strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. A father's blessing. <laughs> He's saying, the reason my son did not die in the pit. I, I, is there a revelation on this side? C can I try and preach a bit on this side? What Jacob is saying, the reason my son did not die in the pit when the archers shot at him, the reason he did not die in slavery or in prison is because my God protected him. Are you understand me, friends? In other words, I was praying for my son all the time. And I want you to know Revival House. I'll be praying for you. Yeah. And I'll be praying. Uh, am I in the right house here? Yeah. I'll be praying for you. So that my God shall preserve you. Yeah. And shall protect you. Yeah. And shall keep you going. Yeah. And as you pray for your children. Pray for that prayer. That may the God that I serve. Preserve my daughter. Yeah. Preserve my son. Keep him in school. Yeah. Keep him at work. Yeah. Keep him at university. Yeah. Woo! You see I'm a father of five grown-up children and I've seen them grow up I send them to university some in Kenya some overseas and I saw them come back safely what preserved them the prayers of the father and the mother are you understand me friends and that's what Jacob is saying it is the prayers of this father's God that has the shepherd of Israel that has kept my son and as you speak a blessing on your son and as I speak a blessing over your life Look at me carefully. The, the anointing that flows upon my life, let it flow upon your life. Yeah. The blessings coming upon my life, let them come upon your life. If God has preserved my marriage, let him preserve yours. If God has kept my children, let him keep yours. The doors that open for me, let them open for you. The things that would fear me, let them fear you. The doors that would open for me, let them open for Somebody say amen. amen. You know, some of you are looking at, and who do you think you are? I'm God's shepherd. I, I'm God's servant. 
a shepherd of God's people by the grace of God with an anointing upon my life that picked me from the village <laughs> and changed me and made me into a teacher of God's word. If God can do that for a village boy like me, I want to assure you. And if he can do it for a man who landed in Egypt as a slave, as a servant, and in the end of his life, he was a teacher, he can do it for you in England. You are not in the wrong place. You are in the right service this morning. Somebody say amen. amen. Woo. Are you ready for this? Go ahead. Verse 25. Thank you. You are doing well now. Whoever is there. Verse 25. Bring that quickly. Verse 25. That is bow about. He said, even by the God of thy father who shall help thee and by the almighty who shall bless. I thought we were reading together. How come you? This is your English. Read it with me. Are you able to help me now? This, the, thou. That's your English? Me, I come from where we speak another kind of English. But let's read this with you. Even by the God of thy father who shall help thee. And by the almighty who shall bless you. With the blessings of heaven above. Blessings of the deep that lies under. Blessing of the breast and of the womb. Continue very quickly. And the blessings of your father have done what? Prevailed over the blessings of my progenitors and to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and with the crown of him that was separate from his brothers. Amen. I told you I've come to separate you. I said I've come to set you aside. I have nothing against your brothers. I have no problem with your sisters other than they are not here. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah if you are here two brothers I am blessing both of you but if you are here alone I separate you uh, the, now this side they are offended can, can I preach in this area here if you are here alone I separate you and I single you out from your brothers and I declare our father's blessing on you somebody say amen, amen. he tells him your father's blessing has prevailed I pray today that the blessing I shall declare upon you shall prevail. Yeah. Shall prevail over the blessings of any ancestral spirit. Yeah. Am I in the right church here? Yeah. Whether you are cursed, whether you are whatever was done in your family line, today we shall reverse it because the Father's blessing we declare today shall prevail. Yeah. It shall prevail. Yeah. Let me tell your neighbor, neighbor, Forget my history. Forget my past. From today, the Father's blessing I receive shall prevail over that of my ancestors. I don't care what your ancestors did or they did not do. What they said or did not say, I come with the anointing of the Heavenly Father. And I declare that anointing of the heavenly father prevails. <laughs> the devil is a liar. May God punish the devil and his mother-in-law. Because today someone's life is changing. Someone's future is changing. Bump your neighbor, tell him, I told you. I said you bump them. I didn't say you look at them. I said you bump them fast because some of them are dozing. Tell him, I told you. My life. My future. My business, my family, my health will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. You will be glad you came to this service. Even me, I'm glad I came to this service. Somebody say amen. Because I purpose whenever I meet people, they don't go back the same way they came. In fact, they, by the time we meet next time, they'll have a testimony. And tell me, Bishop, I met the God of Elijah. And I saw fire from heaven. Woo! Somebody say amen. amen. Are we still together? Yes. The beginning of Joseph was ignominious. Leave alone the entry in Egypt. Even his own beginning was ignominious. Because, are you, are you writing notes? Do you know, what the, you know the meaning of the word ignominious? And you're in England. <laughs> I cannot teach you English when you're in England. Need me? Okay. No, I'm joking. Ignominious means it was small. It was bad. It was poor. It was, it was not desirable. Mm. 
Why? The guy was off. His mother died when he was young. What a beginning. Because Jacob had two wives. Come on, do you remember their name? Leah and Rachel. Joseph is Rachel's son. And it, it, after Leah had four boys, Rachel had none. By the time he gets, he gets, she gets Joseph, Leah already had four sons. And then by the time she's getting the second boy called Benjamin, she dies in childbirth. Can we talk? She, he must have been about five or so years old. Can I talk to you? Am I making sense? By the time his mother dies. So his mother dies when he was young. And I'm talking to somebody here. You either you are orphaned at a tender age. Your father died. Your mother died. Your father walked out. You, something happened. And therefore you grew up without one parent or without both parents. I want you to know God is, God is in the business. Of picking people like you yeah. and making something out of you. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you're orphaned, you are in the right church. Yeah. It doesn't matter what happened to you in your tender age, you are in the right place today. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. And I pray, may the God of heaven. Oh, they say they are struggling with this word. Can I pray this area here? I pray that the God of heaven may he heal you, yeah. may he heal of your pain yeah. and of the shame yeah. of losing a mother. Of losing a father when you are young and you grew out, you grew up without that love of that father and mother. May God heal you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Me, my father and mother died when I was a grown up. But even now, when I go home and I see a grave and another grave, I feel, and, and I'm 63, I still feel, you know what, I'm an orphan. So I'm trying to imagine those who lost their parents. When they were five years, six years, nine years, ten years, when they were still going to school, it was a disaster. And especially in a dysfunctional family like Jacob's. Because the next thing we see about him, he falls into the hands of brothers who hated him. Can, I, can it become worse than that? He did not, not only did he lose his mother when he was young, but his brothers actually hated him. That's what the Bible tells us in, in, uh, in Genesis chapter 37. He says, when he told his brothers of a dream, they hated him the more. Those are the archers who threw spears and arrows at him to wound him. It is brothers who hated him. And some of you may be here, and they're telling me, Bishop, you don't understand. Me, I grew up in a home where my brothers were stepbrothers. And they didn't care for me. Even my own physical brothers hated me, have abused me. You are here and you have been hurt by brothers. You have been hurt by sisters. Don't put up your hand. But I've been sent to speak to you. Amen. That God can pick you. Yes. From a place where your brothers have wounded you. Yeah. Where your sisters have taken advantage of you. Yes. I pray may the God of heaven yes. heal you today. Yes. And make, you, make something out of your life. Can somebody say amen? amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Can I continue? Yes. Not only did he lose his mother when he was young. Not only did he fall into the hands of brothers who hated him, so that they hated him so much that when he went to take them food, imagine it, taking them food, they conspired to kill him. The man is bringing you food, for God's sake. The man is carrying KFC, <laughs> Pizza Hut, and he's bringing for you, and you are planning this one we are killing, and we are cheating our father. That's how much they hated him, to the level that they wanted to kill him. Can I continue? Not only that, but it comes to a time that every dream that he had was a disaster. Because the guy was a dreamer. But all his dreams were now in vain. Because when he dreamt the dreams, they're there in, uh, get, get to me Genesis chapter 37, verse 5. Genesis 37, verse 5. Are you there? Because I know some of you are going faster than my daughter. What does he say? Read for me. What does he say? And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brothers. What did they do? They hated him the more, yet the more. He was a dreamer. Can I continue? Look at, verse, look at verse 9. Go to verse 9 very quickly. What does it say? And he dreamed yet another dream. And he told it to his brethren. And said, behold, I've dreamed a dream more. And behold, the son 
the moon and 11 stars made what? Obeisance to me. What does even his father say? Uh, go, go to verse 10, very quickly, verse 10. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him, said to him, What is this dream that I have dreamt? Shall I and the mother, thy mother and thy brethren indeed come down, down to bow down ourselves to you? Am I, are you getting the picture? Now, not only is, are his brothers hating him, even his father doesn't understand him. And I'm talking to every dreamer. But thank you, I had an amen here. I'm talking to every dreamer. And I've come to, I've come to encourage you. Amen. If someone has trashed your first dream, Amen. dream again. Amen. If someone has made a mess of your first dream, do what? Dream again. Don't allow your brothers to kill your dream. Don't allow your sisters to kill your dream. Don't allow your father to kill your dream. I've been sent by God to encourage a dreamer in this house. A visionary in this house. Dream again. May God give you another vision. May you open another business. May you start again. May you buy another bus. May you open another shop. Somebody say amen. Bump your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. I will dream again. Don't allow non-dreamers to kill your dream. Because this world, you, you can see a man, 12 sons, only one was a dreamer. 11 were non-dreamers. Imagine the ratio of 11 to 1. If you're in this house, I declare you are a dreamer. The others, see this side there, the amen is stronger here. I'm looking for it, there's, an, there's a demand on my anointing. I find it's coming from this corner. Raise your hands toward this side. And we just release a bit of that anointing. Father, visit them also in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. I declare that if you are in this house, you shall be among the one dreamer in your family, in your clan. Somebody say amen. May, may God make you a solution. May God make you a solution giver. May God make you an answer to your father's family, to your mother's family, to your village. May you become an answer. Somebody say amen. So if someone has trashed your first dream in verse 5, verse 9 is your portion. Amen. Dream again. And I want to declare, your second dream shall be bigger. Than the first. Ah, tell your neighbor, I told you. Tell your neighbor, I told you. My life will never. No, look for a neighbor looks like they believe you. You are talking to a neighbor, that's why you are whispering. Look for a neighbor looks like they believe you. And tell him, my life will never, ever be the same again. Because I am dreaming again. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Do you see this dream? Have you, have you read about of his dreams? Do you see a pit in the dream? Do you see a pit? Do you see a prison? No. Do you see slavery? No. It was not part of the dream. But Jacob, Joseph found himself living a life that was not a part of the dream. I'm talking to somebody here. You are going through a situation that's not a part of your dream. <laughs> Believe in the God of the dream, who is a dream giver. Somebody say amen. amen. What you are going through right, right now does not look as a part of the dream. The pit, when he found himself in that pit, he says, oh, yeah, you know what? I never saw this in my dream. It's true. But you know something? He never died in the pit. God sent someone to pick him out. I'm prophesying to somebody. I don't know who has thrown you in the pit. From today, I declare, may God send someone else to pull you out. May God send somebody else to pull you out. Tell your neighbor, I'm coming out. Tell your neighbor, I'm coming out. I, I'm not dying in this pit. Today I release a messenger from heaven. Someone else threw you in. May God raise somebody else to do what? To pull you out. Somebody say amen. amen. He found himself a slave in Egypt. That was not part of his dream. But there he was. Working in Potiphar's house. Washing underwear. Opening gates. Cooking food. Open, uh, standing at the door. When others are sleeping in the night, he's standing at the gate. That was not part of his dream. But that was the reality. Amen. And some of you, the reality you're going through right now, 
looks more like a nightmare than a dream. I've been sent by the Father to assure you. You might that may be a starting point. That shall not be your end. I said that shall not be that will not be your end. Tell your neighbor for me, neighbor. Don't laugh at me where I am right now. Because God is still at work in my life. Oh, our daughter led us to sing. I don't know how he did it, but he shall do it. When your back is in the wall, you don't know how he does it, but somehow he does it. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. Can I continue? Can I? He was sent to prison for a crime he never committed. My God, what's worse than that? When Potiphar's house comes to him strong, wearing her lingerie and channel five. Any young man away from home would have melted. I say, my father's house sold me here and God has forgotten me. Thank you for this miracle. I've been working here now. The master's wife is after me. I can take over this house. Maybe not the house, but at least the bedroom. But the young man said, no way. I know I'm here unfairly, but I'm still not doing this because there's a God that I believe in. Listen, don't mix sin with your dream. I'm talking as a prophet here. Don't allow sin to mix up with your dream. Sin and mix, and dreams and sin do not mix very well. They are bad mixtures. Can I continue? Sin is a dream killer. If you are not married, you are not married. If you are married, you are married. Don't fool around. I know I, I don't sound very popular here, but the anointing upon my life must be, I must say that. If you are not married, you are not married. If you are married, you are married. So don't come and say, now nah, I'm not married. Oh, today I'm married, tomorrow I'm not. No, 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 make up your mind. What you are. Live what you are. Dreams and sin don't mix. Because sin is a dream killer. I felt I need to throw in that caveat. Yes. Put it in your notes. Because so that you don't forget it. Yes. He said, I shall not sin. Against my God. So he's arrested and thrown in prison. I'm talking to somebody here. You have been accused unfairly. And you feel, the, Lord, the world is unfair. I actually, I refuse to sin. He has ended up in prison. God, I thought this is the way I should have come out. But I've ended up in a worse place than I was. At least there I was in a house. I was eating. I was drinking. I had at least some freedom. But here now, I'm in a dungeon. I'm talking to somebody here. Our God sometimes allows things to get worse before they can get better. So that he can get maximum glory. I'm talking to somebody here. One of these days, God shall put a stop to your way down. And after you put a stop, the only direction you shall go is a way up. Somebody say amen. amen. Can I continue? When he was in that dungeon, something else happened to him. He interpreted a dream for somebody who forgot him. <laughs> oh, He interpreted a dream for somebody and told him, please, sir, when you go out, and you go before the king. I am here unfairly. Don't forget me. Please mention my name before the king. I, I didn't do anything wrong. But the Bible says when the guy got out and he got into a good place, now he had money, he was back in his house, he forgot Joseph. I'm talking to people here who you help somebody. You gave them a house. You drove them to work in winter you, until they got papers. Did I touch some, na some raw nerve here? When, when they had no papers, they depended on you. You opened a door for them. You gave them a platform. You, you, you took them to work. You introduced them to their first job until they started getting some money. And suddenly, they don't take your phone calls. Whenever you call them, you just fear, ah, we are sorry, uh, this customer is not available. Leave a message on the answering machine. You go to the answering machine, you want to say, ah, I'm joking. And you told them, sorry, the answering machine, the voicemail is full. <laughs> Don't put up your hand, you know I'm talking about you. I've been sent by the Father to encourage you. Amen. I said, I've been sent by the Father to encourage you. Amen. The people whom you thought would help you have not helped you. 
The people you thought would walk with you are not walking with you. The people you thought would be on your side are not on your side. Today I come by the grace of God with the anointing of the Father to declare there is a God who changes. I say who, for, who does not forget those sacrifices, who remembers your good works. I say who remembers what you have done for others. May that God visit you today. I say may the God who visited Cornelius visit your life today with an answer to prayer. Somebody say amen. amen. Bump your neighbor again. Tell him neighbor, amen. my fortunes are changing. They are doing what? They are, changing. they are doing what? They are changing. Because when they began to change for this man, Joseph. Can you open this for me? I'm telling you they changed in a fantastic way. And I'll just give you four in a way and then come out of your way. In the name of the Lord. Are you ready for this? Now, this one now. This is my thumb now. Not yours. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. When God he wants to change your life. He surprises you. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you still there, girl? Are you still on the computer? Are you still there? Yeah, get me Genesis 41. Verse 1. Just give you four and then I get out of your way. Ready for this? Hallelujah. Genesis 41. What does it say? And it came to pass at the end of two full years. That is after year, that's how long he was forgotten. <laughs> are you ready for this? Are you, are you ready for revelation? Yes. Or you don't want revelation? Yes. You want revelation? Yes. Or you want me to lay hands on you falling here on the ground? Yes. I'm not that kind of a preacher. You don't do bicycle kicks in my services. <laughs> in my services, you receive the word. Yes. Solid word. Let the revelation of the word of God set you free. Amen. My hands don't set you free. The word of God sets you free. The truth that you know sets you free. Me, I'm teaching you truth. Amen? Amen. Are, you seeing the, 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 are you seeing chapter 41 verse 1? After two full years, it came to pass. What happened? That Pharaoh dreamed. Shh. And Pharaoh? Dreamed. Write this down. I, read, write, yeah, I thought you were writing some stuff down. Joseph dreamt. Joseph dreamt. And his dream took him to prison. Joseph dreamt. And his dream took him to where? And he took another man's dream to take him out. Ola kazanta la mamazika li babazaka. Joseph dreamt and his dream took him where? To prison. For him to come out of this predicament, someone greater had to get a dream. And by the dream of Pharaoh, they had to send for Joseph. Do you remember we read that? And the king sent for him. Why did the king send for him? Because the king had received a what? A dream. You see, the dream of the butler was a small dream. There are some small dreams you have thought would help you. But they are too small for where you are going. Ah, I thought you wanted some revelation. The, the dream of the butler was too small for where you are going. God has to touch some big fish. And give them a dream on which your dream can ride. Did you hear what I just said? Your dream shall ride on another dream. And I'm prophesying something over your life. In the book of Luke. I think chapter 2, from verse 1. Yeah, lady, are you able to get it for me quickly? Luke chapter 2, verse 1. Let me see if I, I'm getting it there. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. So I can show you what I'm talking about here. And it came to pass. Yeah, there it is. Read, read verse 1 and 2 for me. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be what? Taxed. Continue very quickly. And this tax thing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. Continue quickly. And all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house of the lineage of David. Continue very quickly. Verse 5. Verse 5. To be taxed with Mary, 
his espoused wife, being great with child. Verse 6, let's finish verse 6. What does it say? Verse 6, um, and so it was that while they were there, while they were where? There, that the days were accomplished that he should be. Do you think God was interested in the census? We don't even know the results of the census. God was interested in this virgin who was carrying a baby, but she was living in the wrong city. She was living in the city of Nazareth in the county of Galilee while the prophets had said the Messiah shall be born in Bethlehem of Judea. So for God to remove Mary and Joseph from Nazareth to Bethlehem, an order came from Rome. <laughs> when Quirinius was the governor of Assyria, that everybody must be counted in their own village. So that forced Joseph, am I in the right church here? Yeah. To take his wife who was pregnant on a donkey ride from Nazareth to Bethlehem. By the time she gets there, the baby was due. So that it may be fulfilled. The dream that was spoken by prophet Micah. That are you Bethlehem, you might be small. But out of you shall come a king. I'm prophesying to somebody here. May I, am I in the right church here? May Pharaoh get a dream. On over which your dream shall be fulfilled. May an order come from Rome. I say may an order come from Rome. From Augustus Caesar himself. That shall change things in the, in the bara, Shall change things in this county. Shall change things in the home office. So that your favor shall come. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You must understand what God can do. An order can come and everybody shall be wondering, why did this order come? And that order just came to save you. Yeah. Do you remember Katrina? Yeah. Remember there was, a, there was a storm called Katrina? Yeah. Do you remember that storm called Katrina? Let me tell you why Katrina came. Because some of you just, you just knew it was a bad storm. And it was a hurricane that came on New Orleans. And what happened? There was a brother called Nandua. Nandua Harrison is a friend of mine. He's a pastor. He was living in the U.S. In the city of Birmingham, Alabama. And he had gone to the courthouse in, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And the judge told him, I'm sending you back to Kenya. But he's giving his wife and children status. But sending the husband where? Back. So he told him, I'm giving you one month. But leave your passport where? Here. Go and look for money because we are not using American money. We are going to use your own ticket. Go and raise a ticket. Come back after one month. Show me your ticket. I'll give you a passport. From here you go to Atlanta Airport. Go home. But he has given his wife and children status. How many of you know that's not right? What God has joined together, let no man put. But it's, you out you give the wife and children status. And you're telling the, man, the husband. And he was serious. He deported. He was deporting him. So Nando left him the passport and he goes back to Birmingham. He's working for a month. Within that month, Katrina came. <laughs> without, uh, without Nando's knowledge, the, store, the storehouse for passports, he was in New Orleans. So when Katrina came, one of the things that were carried into the Gulf of Mexico were all the passports. By the time Nando is going to look for you, he's going with a ticket, say, Your Honor, I've come with my ticket here, give me my passport. The magistrate was, I don't have your passport. No. We don't, where, your passport, do you know, is Nando has been given status now because the, God can order a storm. And you are wondering, this storm, it is only to save someone, save a marriage. At least I'm here inside. Uh, yeah. at least, am, I, am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. May God give someone a dream yeah. on which your dream shall ride. Yeah. Are you a dreamer in this house? Yeah. Are you a dreamer in this house? Yeah. Pharaoh shall receive a dream yeah. over which your dream shall ride to be fulfilled. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor, give them a smile and tell them, I told you. I told my, you. Life, my life, my future, my future. will never Ever, ever be the same again. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Can, I, can I give you the three more? Amen. Are you ready for them? Yeah? Joseph started out as a liability in his father's house. 
But in Egypt, he became a celebrity. <laughs> I'm changing someone's status. I say by this blessing, I'm changing your status. I don't know what you are, where you came from. You could have been a liability. So that your brother are saying, what do you think you are? Your father is saying, who, you, are you believing that me and your mother shall come down and bow before you? You know, he was a liability in that house. They saw him as a liability. But in Egypt, God made him a celebrity. Shall I tell you another liability? David was another liability. David, when he was young, he was a liability in his father's house. So that even when Samuel came to look for a king, they never called David. They called Eliab, they called uh, uh, Shama, uh, uh, Elihu, Eliaza. They all stood up before Samuel, and Samuel kept on saying, not that one, not that one, not that one, until seven had gone. And he's asking Jesse, isn't there another boy in this house? Just saying, the one who is here is, is a nuisance. <laughs> he's a liability in this house. We don't normally call him where they are visitors, because he can start blowing his nose any time. He can start singing out of tune. You know some of these fellows who sing out of tune? talking to somebody here. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm talking about you. Don't put up your hand. But now that you have come in my presence, by the blessing I'm pronouncing today, you could have been a liability somewhere. From today, may God make you a celebrity. I say, may God make you a celebrity. Somebody say, amen. May God make you a what? May God make you a what? Somebody say, amen. God will make you a celebrity. Somebody say, amen. This thing won't work. This won't stop this. This, this, this Wi-Fi. It wants to start updating when I'm preaching. It wants to make me a celebrity. Can I give you a scripture for that? Hmm? Chapter 41. Genesis 41. Verse 38. Genesis 41, 38. God shall make you a celebrity. Chapter 41, verse 38. Are you there? And Pharaoh said to his servant, what does he say? Read for me. And Pharaoh said to his servant, Can we find such one as this? A man in whom the spirit of God is. Is he becoming a celebrity or not? <laughs> may you become an answer. Amen. I say, may God make you an answer. Amen. Where you thought you were a problem. Amen. May God make you a solution. Amen. Where you thought you were a liability. Amen. May God make you a what? A celebrity. Go to the next verse. Let me see what it says. Verse and Pharaoh said to Joseph, as much as God has showed you all this, no one so discreet and wise as you are. I like that. Eh? Continue. Continue. What does Pharaoh say more about him? Eh? You shall be over my house. According to your word, shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. You remember, the king sent for him. He made him ruler over his people. That's a celebrity. Are you getting the picture here? Give them the simpler translation now.
they did with David. You know, he became a celebrity. They were now singing. And David asked him 10,000. Somebody say, Amen. pronounced. Some doctors, accountants. Somebody say amen. We used to ignore it. Today we wish we had a hot share. chariot that rides just behind the king. When Joseph is passing, people are bowing before him, including Potiphar and his wife. Now his brothers arrive. And Joseph is seated in an office. Where did they leave him? They left him in chains. They left him naked. They left him without shoes. They left him a slave. The man they are meeting is not a slave. He's a the man in the right church here. He's a prime minister. He's not naked. He's well dressed. With a cold chain around his neck. With a signet ring on his hands. In an office with an oak paneled table. Air conditioned. Red carpet. When they come in they are bowing. Joseph sees them. He knows who they are. Why? How does he know who they are? Because they are still dressed the way they were dressed. When he's... <laughs> Can I finish this thing? 
they are, they are still dressed the way they were dressed when they sold him. So you can say, that's Naphtali. That is done. Oh, look at Reuben. Look at Simeon. Oh my God, Levi looks so old. But they cannot even know him. I, I've come to declare somebody here. Those who forgot you, when they meet you again, they shall not recognize you. Because you shall not be the way they left you. You shall be smarter. You shall be stronger. You shall be healthier. You shall be more beautiful. You shall be more handsome. You shall be in a better house. You shall have a better car. Your business shall be greater. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Tell your neighbor, I told you. My life, my future will never, ever be the same. Somebody say amen. May God change your car. Change your dressing. Change your diet. Change your residence. So that those who knew you, walked out on you, abandoned you, when they left you with a baby, next time they find you, they shall find your girl is a graduate. They shall find your son is a lawyer. Am I talking to somebody here? They shall discover you're no longer where they left you. They left you in a single room. They shall find you with the two houses. One you are living, the one you are renting. They shall not recognize you. Someone tell your neighbor for me, neighbor, my life will never, ever be the same again. May those who forgot you, the next time they meet you, in fact, they'll be bowing, not knowing they are bowing before Joseph. When they wake up, Joseph says, yeah, I know you. But they, because to them, Joseph was dead. Can't be that one. Until when he told them, may God bless you that far. Are you ready for this blessing? If you are not born again, this is a good time to give your life to Jesus. Allow me to pray for you. If someone is not born again, just stand on your feet so that these blessings can be yours. Stand, let me pray for you. Don't be shy. You are not closing the eyes. You will not live, live this life when, uh, with our eyes closed. Our eyes will have to open sometime. Like now they are open. You say, I want to say yes to Jesus. Quickly come to me. Let me pray for you. Know Jesus Christ. Because that's the beginning of what I'm teaching about. Because even today, I normally go back where I grew up. In Nairobi City. I meet people, they don't even know me. Because the last time I left there, I was working on foot. Going for my A-levels. Now when I go back, I don't go back on foot. No, 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 I go with a machine. I call it a machine. It's a car that has got more than eight airbags. So when they see it, they don't know if this is my car. So when they meet me, they say, ah, JB, you are the one. And I'm looking at them and say, who are you? You have forgotten me. Says, who are you? They mention a name I was a classmate with before 1966 when I was doing my class, KPE. Says, oh, I remember. Oh, you, are, you used to sit behind me in class. Oh, yeah. And they still live in the same neighborhood. I'm no longer there. Because I got saved when I was finishing high school. And that changed my life. Your life can change to the glory of God. Amen. Father. Girl, where are those girls of mine? Come, come up here. That choir. That great choir. I don't know how he did it. When my back was on the wall. Remember that song? I, I, that song you blessed me girl that girl blessed me that song she'll go far this girl will go far that's what God does when your back is in the wall you're in a dungeon he can touch Pharaoh give Pharaoh a dream that will pull you out of that dungeon and all that shall come from Caesar that shall affect everybody else but God is just wanting to bless you he can send a storm called Katrina just to save Harrison from being deported. That's what this God can do. Somebody say amen. amen. If he did it for Harrison, he'll do for someone here tonight. You'll bring me a testimony. We we'll just sing that song very quickly, then we share the Holy Communion. If they are not getting the key girl you sing, you had a good voice, you, your voice can hold up without instruments. You made a way 
my back was against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made away Lord and I'm standing here only because you made a you let's stand together and just made sing a this afternoon we have seen in your word how much of a way you made for Joseph because of a father's blessing and tonight so in this afternoon as we come to this moment of sharing the Holy Communion this is the anchor of our blessing the broken body of Jesus the shed blood of Christ. This is the anchor of everything good we are receiving from our Heavenly Father. Whom Paul reminds us, blessed be our God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. This afternoon, Father, as we share in this Holy Communion, with the wafer as the broken body of Christ and the cup representing your blood. I pray that your people shall begin to experience the Father's blessing for healing, restoration, deliverance, but above all, forgiveness and remission of sin. And through that li living, new and living way of the broken body of Christ, Lord, I pray that everybody sharing today shall find access to the Father without any hindrance. And always, anywhere, at any time, access the Father's blessing of grace that shall enable us to stand whatever the circumstances. Therefore, today, Father, we lift this bread before you and we say thank you. Because we are reminded in scripture that the night that you are betrayed after supper you took bread and you broke it and you blessed it and you told your, your disciples to take and eat for this is your body that is broken for us therefore today fathers we partake of this broken body of this broken bread as some as an example of the broken body of Christ I pray all the blessings, all the victory, all the triumphs, all that was purchased by that broken body shall be ministered to your people today, to the glory of God. Let in this service people experience physical healing, emotional healing, mental healing. Let people experience healing even at home, healing in relationships that comes because the body of Christ 
was broken for us. Lord Paul reminds us in the same manner you also took the cup lifted it up and said this cup is the blood, my blood that seals a new covenant between God and man. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of the son of the living God. By this blood we overcome Satan. By this blood, castles are broken. By this blood, witchcraft is broken. By this blood, our sins are washed away. By this blood, we are sealed. As standing righteous before God as though we never seen before. This blood is a covering of our mind, of our lives, of our homes. This is the blood of the Passover Lamb of God. That you will pass over us. So that that angel of death shall not see us. Therefore, with the power that is in the broken, shed blood of Jesus, I pray your people shall be preserved from the spirit of premature death. They shall be kept strong and alive and healthy and fulfill their purpose in the days that are ahead. Because we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus as we partake and share together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And together we say... And again we say, Amen. let's be seated please, as they serve. Let's wait for one another to receive the cup, receive the bread. Let us wait for one another. Receive the cup, receive the bread. Please don't... Don't partake, let us wait for one another. Paul recommends we wait for one another. We shall partake with one another. He made a way through the broken body. When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over
God has got the cap? Anybody who hasn't got the cap yet? Okay, thank you, Ashes. If you come back this way, Ashes. You have finished serving. Thank you. God bless you. Everybody's got the cup and the bread. Everybody's got the, the wafer. Thank you. Hallelujah, Lord. Again, we thank you. As we hold the cup and the bread in our hands, our hearts are full of gratitude for your broken body and your shed blood. Go ahead and partake of the bread. the eighth manner the Bible says and yet they died but before they died there was not a barren person among them sickness had been taken away from them even their clothes did not wear off Lord I pray as we partaken of this symbol of the living bread and the living blood let even greater miracles partake in our lives I release signs. I release miracular signs. And I release wonders in your life, even at this time, because of the Holy Communion that you have partaken. May God visit you with the miraculous signs and wonders in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm going to speak a Father's blessing. Please don't take, don't take the cups home and the souvenirs give them back to the ashes. I'd like Pastor Bonnie to invite the children to come and then we can speak a blessing. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Can you receive an offering now before the children come? Isn't that beautiful? It's giving time is offering time. Hallelujah. I like giving to the Lord. So let's prepare ourselves to give. Do you have a song for the offering? Have you prepared a song? You can't miss a song. Maybe I see you can't miss a song. God bless you girls. Yeah, and this young men are playing the, the, the guitar and, and the drums for you. Ashes, are you ready for us? Look at a neighbor that you have been talking to and you like and tell him, neighbor. Look for a neighbor that you like. Tell him, neighbor. Today, I'm in the mood of giving something special in the house of God. Has the Lord blessed you by the word? I'm asking, has the Lord blessed you by the word? And the Holy Communion? Reminding you the special blessing of God towards us. The broken body of His Son, the shed blood. If you had planned to give 20 pounds, give 40. If you had plans to give 50, give 100. If you had planned to give 100, give 200. Somebody say amen. amen. So you cannot give 100 unless there is another 100. So I would like us today, let us double our gift to God. Let's bless Revival House to the glory of God. Somebody say amen. amen. This, this church depends on the giving of God's people. That's what I teach all my sons wherever I go. We depend on the giving of the local congregation. I depend on the giving of God's people and so does Revival House. And therefore I would like us to be generous with our giving today. Some of you may have to give sacrificially. But let's do it to the glory of God. 
and bless the one. If you need an envelope, they are there. Please receive an envelope. If you need one, writing checks, write to Revival House. Writing checks, write to Revival House. Amen. We bring it up, we bring it forth. Beautiful, beautiful. The choir will minister to us. And uh, when you are ready, just walk. Put your sacrifice on the altar. Put your gift on the altar. Put your tithe on the altar to the glory of God. Amen. Let's go ahead. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Give him a clap offering. Amen. 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 Uh, at this point, I would like to call the, the parents and their children. Just if you can come on the aisle, for those of you who can come on, uh, in front, come and speak a blessing to your children. Lay hands on them. Prophesy over them at this point. 
and then Bishop is going to speak uh, a, a corporate blessing to everybody. So all the parents, if your children are here, young or old, just come with your children in front, speak a blessing over this altar, and then finally uh, Bishop is going to speak a, a blessing over us. If you can do it quickly, please, because of time. Thank you. If your parents are here, your mother is here, your father is here. Hallelujah. All the fathers begin to speak a blessing over your children. And for those of you, your fathers are not here. Bishop is going to speak a corporate blessing for everybody. Yeah. And even if your parents are not here, Bishop is going also to pray for you, everybody. So nobody left out. If, you are, if there's any child out there, your parents are not here, just come forward. Just come forward. Your parents are not here. Hallelujah. You, you bless. These are yours? Yeah, speak a blessing over them. Then I'll pray over you. Amen. Just bless, bless them. Pronounce a blessing over them. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you because nobody shall leave this house today without a father's blessing. Lord, even as we are gathered here, nobody shall leave this house today without a father's or a mother's blessing. We speak a mother's blessing. We speak a father's blessing. As the parents are blessing their children, Lord, I am praying for a corporate release of your blessing, of a father's blessing. Like Jacob blessed Joseph. Lord, that blessing shall overflow over every child in this house. Lord, they shall leave this place knowing they are blessed. The archers may fire shots at them. They may even wound them, but they shall not destroy them. Because this father's blessing shall prevail. It shall prevail. Therefore, Father, we thank you for this beautiful gesture. When we see parents laying hands on their children, Lord, we release a blessing on the fathers and on the children, on the mothers and their children. And we are praying for corporate blessing like it was prayed on Joseph. Joseph was a fruitful branch that goes over the walls of the enemy, that scales every obstacle, that rises above every barrier and goes above every barrier that shall be the story of those in this house they shall go like a fruitful branch they shall bring fruit fruit in fruit in season and every barrier the enemy creates before them they shall be able to surmount it they shall go over it they shall ride above it because we release our father's blessing on this house bless the parents bless their children lord bless them with the blessings of heaven above the blessing of the ground beneath their feet. Bless, bless them with the blessing of the air which they breathe. And we declare today they shall be blessed as they go out, as they come in, as they go to school, as they go to work. Whatever they shall lay their hands upon to do, it shall be blessed. Let whatever they touch to do prosper. Let them know increase. Let them know multiplication. Let them know favor upon their lives because we release it. With this blessing, we cancel everything negative that could have been said, could have been done against your children, any word that's still affecting them, any curse of or spell that's still affecting them. We cancel its power by the broken body of Jesus, by the shed blood of Jesus, by the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We cancel every curse, every spell, every witchcraft, anything done against them it shall not prevail and we release the blessing of the father the blessing of the son the blessing of the holy spirit let it be the portion of the parents and the children of this house because we re receive it together come and lift up and say thank you we receive it together and we say thank you father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit because we receive your blessing in jesus mighty name and together we say we commend you to the Holy Spirit. 
was able to keep you from falling was able to keep you and sustain you was able to open doors for you was able to brighten the path before you was able to make a way where there's no way we commend you to the holy spirit who's able to give you life was able to quicken your mind and quicken your bodies to the life of the living god we commend you to the holy spirit who's able to lead and guide you let him become your companion in everything you do in jesus mighty name god bless you Thank you. Amen. Before we share the grace, the, uh, yeah. Quickly, quickly. Before we share the grace, uh, number one, excuse me, give me a minute. Oh? The choir, once again, they are going to do a, 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 gotcha. a song for uh, the final song. But please don't go home. We have one, plenty of food. Today is Father's uh, uh, is the Blessing Sunday. So we have plenty of food, please. Even those who are fasting, we can agree you break the fast. It's broken. Now. It's broken. Whatever you are fasting for, oh, you, are, you are believing God to do, I believe it is done. So please, you can break your fast and you are going to enjoy it together. So there's plenty of food. But before that, we are going to hear uh, one more song from the choir. And then I'm going to do the announcement. And then we'll, be, we'll come to the end of the service. Or let me do this. Let me just do the announcement. And then I will, not sit down, I will not stand up again. On 23rd of October, we are going to have our international day. So please, for those of you who need to source some uh, traditional dresses, please make sure you do it before 23rd. And then tonight we are going to have the couples seminar with Bishop and Mom. Uh, I think we'll do this next Sunday. So time in. Yeah? Okay. I've been told also there will be September babies are going to receive their gifts. They have to be very quick because of time. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And then, please, tonight is a couple's uh, seminar with Bishop. And I believe we're we'll starting at exactly at 4. So please, just have a meal. You can hang around and immediately uh, you start four, quarter past four. Uh, that's when you're going to start the couple seminar. So please, please make sure you invite a friend and plan to be here. Even those who are in courtship, come. I believe you'll be blessed. Amen. Thank you. Testing one, two. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me.
awesome we thank god for their lives let us all stand as we share the grace uh before we share the grace please sit down one minute please sit down one minute we wouldn't we wouldn't do justice without this um if you were born in september if you were born in september we would like to recognize the fact that one day uh so many years ago a gift like you was added to this planet. So if you are born in September, please line up at the front. And we are, uh, Channel of Blessings would like to recognize all those who are born in September. Please line up at the front if you are born in September. Whatever age you are, from young to every age, please line up September. If you happen to have two birthdays, please come for your real one. No Facebook birthdays. If you happen to have a real birthday, please come for the real one, not the Facebook one. That is great. That is great. In this, um, one of the vision of Revival House is to, is to honor uh, people. So we have a culture of honor, and we would like to honor everybody. So every month, we have the channel of blessing, which blesses us and remembers the people and their birthdays and so are we going to sing for them which version happy birthday to you dun dun, dun 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 i like that very much that is good happy birthday to you this is your day Happy birthday to you, this is a day for you. Happy birthday to you, to you. <laughs> God bless you, God bless you. So uh, you're going to receive, um, we're going to cut the cake and we're going to ask that as usual, our mom, mother in the house, oh, it's your birthday as well. Oh, <laughs> then I would like to ask Mam Karen to come forward and help with the cutting of the cake, if you don't mind. Mam Karen, please, if you can come and help the cutting with the cake.
I would also like to call mom, mom to come and pray for them, to pronounce a blessing over them. So Mrs. Bishop, please come and pray for them, and God bless you so much. Amen. Let's pronounce a, a word of blessing over their lives. We are praying. Father, we bless you this wonderful Sunday. We bless you, the Lord, you are in the house of God. What a wonderful place to be in. And today, Father, before us, there are these lovely souls that were born in September. Father, we thank you for each one of their lives. We know they are precious before you. And Father, today as a church, we want to speak your blessing upon them. Thank you that they were born, and they were born for a purpose. They were born for great things. And Father, as we celebrate with them their birthday today, Father, we ask that your life shall be blessed. They are going out and coming in shall be blessed. The work of their hands shall be blessed. Those who are growing up, Father, will grow in stature and in health. And above all, Father, I want to pray that you shall keep them in perfect peace, perfect health. Pray for their families that you shall bless them and that the blessings of God will overtake them. So today, Father, we celebrate in what you've done in their lives. Thank you for every soul. Thank you for every life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Um, can we please right, squeeze a little bit so that we can have a picture taken? Thank you for the archives. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are going to share the cake after this. Thank you. Thank you, please. Children, thank you. Thank you. Now let us stand up as we share the grace. Wherever you are, please rise up to your feet. And for the sake of the person who was new, the way we share the grace here is different. We don't cross our eyes. So facing the person who is standing next to you, I may also say, for the sake of anyone who is visiting today, it's Family Sunday and we have a meal. The cell groups have prepared a meal for every one of you. Do not be a rush. We are going to celebrate together and dine together. Facing the person who is standing next to you, eyeball to eyeball. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Eyeball to eyeball. Look for someone. Thank you. Pronounce these words. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. And please remember all couples Remember, we are meeting back here exactly at four. And even if your husband or your wife is away at work or abroad, you're welcome as yourself so that you can come and partake. Thank you.